All right, example one. Suppose you go to an ice cream parlor. There are three choices of flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. Two choices of cones, waffle or sugar, and three choices of toppings, cherries, nuts, or sprinkles. How many possible choices do you have if you choose one from each category? So what I'm going to start with is what's called a tree diagram. So the first option that we have is the flavor of ice cream. You can have chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry. From that, each flavor can have two choices of cones. So I'm just going to do a W and an S for waffle or sugar cone. And then for each of those, you have three types of toppings. We can have cherries, nuts, or sprinkles. So from here, you're going to have three arrows coming out. Cherries, nuts, or sprinkles. So the way that you kind of look at a tree diagram is you can have chocolate ice cream in a waffle cone with cherries. You could have a chocolate ice cream waffle cone nuts, chocolate ice cream waffle cone sprinkles. Okay, now we're not even considering that you can get multiple toppings. We're only considering you choose one flavor, one type of cone, and one type of topping. So now, how many choices do we have if you pick one from each? Can't we add them up at the bottom? There's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. There are 18 choices. Well, there is a faster way to do this. We had um, three choices of flavors, two types of cones, and three toppings. You can just multiply the number of choices. So if you have taken the ACT, this is a guaranteed problem on the ACT. They always say, okay, you have so many of this, entrees, appetizers, desserts, and you just multiply them. And that is referred to as the fundamental counting principle. It says, suppose one event can be chosen in P different ways, and another independent event can be chosen in Q different ways. Then the two events can be chosen successively in P times Q ways. Again, that's called the fundamental counting principle. So in example two, it says, Mrs. McInerney has decided to buy a, a Chevrolet Caprice or a Buick Roadmaster. She has narrowed, her, narrowed down the choices of exterior colors to silver metallic, white, or dark cherry metallic, and interior colors to gray or red. How many different selections of these models and colors are possible? Well, she has two different cars. She has three different colors for the out exterior and two for the interior. So how many choices is that? 12, right? 12. Okay. Now, in example three, it says how many different five-digit numbers can begin with the number nine? What I like to do is I like to make five blanks. And what you're going to do is we are using the fundamental counting principle, but you need to know how many options are for each digit space. If I want the five-digit number to start with a nine, how many possibilities do I have? I only have one. I can only put nine in there. Now, think about digits. How many one-digit numbers are there? Ten. Why are there ten? 
Zero. Zero. Okay, good. So I can pick 10 numbers for any of these other ones. So that's 10 to the fourth for a one with four zeros, which is 10,000. Okay? The difference in example three is that the numbers were not independent. The numbers can be repeated. So in example four, it says how many different pairs of letters from the English alphabet are possible? So I've got a pair, which are two letters. How many letters are in the alphabet? 26. So it's 26 times 26, so you might want to get out your calculators. And that would be 676. In example five, it says truck license plates in a certain state consist of five numbers followed by two letters. How many possible license plates are possible? So we're going to put five numbers followed by two letters. So how many digits are possible for the first number? Ten. And isn't that going to be the case? Because it doesn't say anything about you can't use the same number again. And then for the letters, what are the options? 26 for both. And so then what you're going to do is you're going to multiply those. And you guys really you don't need to use your calculator because what's 26 times 26? And then if you have four tens, isn't that four zeros? So I, I heard you guys pressing buttons there. Now, you, you know, sometimes stop and think about it there. You can, you can do that. Okay, that's a lot of possibilities, right? Okay, a definition. A permutation of n different elements is an ordering of the elements such that one element is first, one is second, one is third, and so on. I already talked about this the other day where I said, okay, what if NHS is holding elections and we have the position of president and vice president. So if Emily is president and Chase is vice president, that's different from Chase being president and Emily being vice president. That's a permutation. What we're also going to talk about today are combinations. Now if I said, okay, NHS is taking five people to a conference, it doesn't matter how you select the five people, all five people are going, okay? So, permutation order matters. It says, in example six, how many permutations are possible for the letters A, B, C, D? So, what you need to do is you need to make an organized list. And I'm going to give you a hint, you do have a quiz problem very, very similar to this. So what I do is I, I try to organize where I'm going to do all the ones that begin with an A. Alright, so do you see the pattern? I did A, B, and then C, D. Then I just switched the C and the D to make it D, C. Then I made the second letter a C and did both combinations, and then I did D. There are no other possibilities to start with the A. Then I'm going to repeat it with the B. I'm going to do B, A, C, D, B, A, D, C. Then what might I choose? B, C, let's say A, D, B, C, D, A. Then what's the next one I need to try with B? B, D, let's say A, C, B, D, C, A. Are there any other possibilities you could think of that start with a B? No, because it's going to be B, A, B, C, or B, D, and those are all the options. So now we're going to start with C. So if you do this in an organized fashion, you're not willy-nilly just randomly guessing and then trying to figure out if you have them all. So you really want to work on an organized list. Okay, look for a pattern.
Okay, then the last group starts with a D. Aren't there 24? Well, this is not an accident. Think about it. You have actually four positions. How many letters can you choose from to get the first one? Well, there's four letters, A, B, C, or D. Now you've selected one of them. How many are remaining to choose from? Three. Now you've selected a second one. Now there's only two, and then there's one. Four times three times two times one is 24. What number is four times three times two times one equal to besides 24? It's four factorial. Okay, that's actually four factorial. So if you're going to take n objects and use them all in order, the number of permutations is just n factorial. Okay, so look at example seven. This one's super easy then. How many ways can seven books be stacked on a shelf? It's seven factorial. Then go ahead and use your calculators. Remember how to get the factorial button. That's math, arrow to probability, but you have to put the seven in first. Now, the definition says the number of permutations of n elements is n factorial, okay? So then let's look at example eight. It says, in how many ways can a baseball team of nine players be ordered for their team picture? Well, that's just n factorial, or nine factorial in this case. That gave me 362,880. Now that is if you are using all n objects that you have or things. In example nine, it says there's eight horses running in a race. In how many different ways can these horses come in first, second, and third, and assume there's no ties? So here's what I like to do on this, and then I'm going to show you a, a fancier way to do this mathematically. If there's eight horses, how many horses are possible for first place? Eight. Now one of them got first place. How many are left? How many horses are left for second place? Seven, and then six. So go ahead and use your calculators. And I got 336. Well, there's an easier way to do that, even though this isn't difficult. <coughs> yeah, did you have a question? Thinking ahead. Okay. If you look at this, remember we talked about um, NCR previously with combinations. NPR is N factorial over N minus R factorial. So here I have eight horses, and I wanted the first three places. So that's eight factorial. Eight minus three is five factorial. Do you see it really does give me the same answer? Okay, and you can do this on your calculator as well. Um, if the numbers get large, if they don't, I want you to know how to use the formula. So let's look at example 10 then. If you want to evaluate 6P3, that's 6 factorial. Now it's 6 minus 3. So that's 6 times 5 times 4. And I got 120. Okay. Right. Any questions on permutations? All right, a combination is a subset of a larger set in which order is not important. So again, permutations, order matters. Combination, the order doesn't matter. So, and we already looked at this in the last lesson. NCR is N factorial over N minus R, that quantity factorial, times R factorial. So in example 12, it says from a list of 10 books, how many groups of five books can be selected? Notice this is a group of five. It didn't say I wanted to arrange them on the bookshelf. If I arrange them on a bookshelf, it matters which one's left, the furthest left you know, to the furthest right. So all you're going to do is 10C5. 
So that's 10 factorial over 5 factorial, 5 factorial. So that's 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. Then the first 5 factorial would cancel. And then I still have the other 5 factorial, which is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now think about it. 5 times 2 is 10. So I can cancel that one. 4 goes into 8 twice. 3 goes into 9 three times. And that's a little bit easier to manage. Did I skip an example? Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Let me go back and catch that. I got 252. Like, Wait. Oh, there it was. I am so sorry. Okay. Suppose you have five students and you need a two-person committee. Well, let's call the first student A and the second student B. And we have five students, okay? So let's call them, I know it's not very interesting, A, B, C, D, E. But how many two-person groups can you have? You can have A goes with B, A goes with C, A goes with D, and A goes with E. The problem is B is, has already been grouped with A, so you don't repeat that one. But you need B with C, and B with D, and B with E. Okay, now C has already been grouped with A and B. You need C, D, C, E. And then the last one you need is D, E. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different ways. Well, think about it. You have five students and you're choosing two at a time. So it's 5 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial. Okay, I'm doing the n minus r in my head. 5 minus 2 is 3. So this is 5 times 4 over 2 times 1. So you can use the formula or write them out. Okay? All right, sorry about that. Do we have that one? Okay. All right, example 13, a standard poker hand consists of five cards dealt from a deck of 52 cards. Let me pause a moment um, because now people don't play cards like they did when I was younger. Um, you have 52 cards in a deck and there's four suits. You have diamonds, hearts, clubs, and spades, and there's 13 of each suit, okay? You have face cards that are king, queen, and jack, okay, king, queen, and jack, they're called face cards because there's a face on it, but your ace two through ten don't have a face on it. All right, so it says how many different hands are possible? Note, after the cards are dealt, you can reorder them in your hand, but we're, when you're talking about holding, um, you know, five cards in your hand, order doesn't matter, okay? So what you're doing is you have 52 cards, and you're choosing five of them. So go ahead and use your calculators on this one. So you're going to type in 52 math probability and do the NCR and choose 5. I'm getting 2,598,960. All right, then 14, this would be 10 factorial over 6 factorial, 4 factorial. Well, 4 times 2 is 8, so I can knock that out. 3 goes in there 3 times. 30 times 7 is 210. So, like example 14 could easily be on the no calculator part. 